Hi, I'm Dr. Bessina. Today we're going to be discussing home handheld devices for laser tattoo removal. Now this is something I didn't even know existed until a patient brought in something called a neat cell last week and asked for my opinion. When I looked at it, I have to say I was skeptical. For one thing, he paid under $200 for this handheld device and a quality picosecond laser system that's FDA approved will cost at least $150,000 and a fully stacked one will break $300,000. So if that was true, that tattoos could be removed with this little device, then I'm very foolish to even maintain contracts on my lasers. I might as well just buy these by the case. So let's look into these neat cell and other handheld laser devices and I'll tell you what I think they can and cannot achieve. But first, remember to click subscribe and hit the bell to be notified for future videos. When we're looking at a laser to remove tattoos, there are three parameters that are very important. Spot size, wavelength, in other words, what frequency of light is being emitted from the laser, and the power measured in millijoules. And when I looked into the device, I really couldn't find that much information in the package insert. It didn't tell me what frequency it was. It just said it's a red light or a blue light and the red light is more powerful. It didn't mention how many millijoules it was. You need at least 1.5 millijoules of energy for any type of Q-swish or picosecond laser to remove a tattoo completely. And this didn't mention anything about the number of millijoules. It did have variable spot sizes, which was good, because a laser that has too small of a spot size, let's say a fixed two millimeter beam, that's a little too small, number one, to cover a large tattoo. And number two, the smaller the beam, the less penetration into the skin you have, Therefore, the more superficial damage you get to the skin. So having a variety of spot sizes is important. That did have a variety of spot sizes, but it didn't mention the amount of energy the laser had, nor the wavelength that the laser had. The patient had asked me would I want to try it on them, and I didn't. For one thing, it's not FDA approved. When you look at the package insert, it's a little, little misleading there. It says using FDA approved picosecond technology. It doesn't say that this handheld device itself is approved. Picosecond lasers have been approved to remove tattoos. As a physician, I can't really use non FDA approved devices. It would really be medical negligence on my part, so I'm not going to do it. But when I looked at videos, they were probably the first, maybe second session when you have plenty of tattoo ink and they cavitated. In other words, they got white when the laser hit them. That's a good sign. Now, I did see some videos that showed the fourth treatment and the fifth treatment and indeed the tattoo was lighter. But my suspicion is when the tattoo becomes very light and ghost-like, that handheld device is not going to have enough energy to get that level of fine ink particles shattered in order for your immune system to pick it up. Many times when patients come to my office and they have a ghost tattoo, when I get the information from the previous practice, I might find that the laser was very old and worn out. Not that having older equipment is horrible. You could have a 12-year-old laser, even a 15-year-old laser, but provided the flash lamps and any of the mirrors and lenses, have to be, they have to be updated. Just like a car, you could get 200,000 miles on your car, but from zero to 200,000 miles, you're gonna have many, many upgrades and repairs and maintenance, lasers are the same. So if you have a laser that just doesn't have enough energy, you're eventually gonna get stuck and it's gonna stop removing the tattoo. That's what I think is going to happen. However, if they just wanted to lighten the tattoo, that looks like it is going to happen. And from the videos that I saw, that looks like it will happen. 
The other thing that it said in the package insert, it's very good for removing solar lentages or sunspots or age spots from the hands and face. That I would imagine it will do as well because solar lentages are not very thick and they usually respond very nicely to either Q-Swish or picosecond lasers. So I can believe that this will remove some of those sunspots. However, I don't like the lay public doing that because there's a fine line between a malignant lesion and a lesion that looks just like a brown spot. And if you don't have the training to identify the fine and subtle differences between the two, you might find yourself lasering some pre-malignant or malignant lesions and taking the color out of them, therefore making them invisible to only appear at a later date at a more advanced stage. There were some things that I was very concerned with with this laser. Number one would be the general public really following the guidelines. In other words, Picosecond laces, the recommended treatment schedule is a minimum of 12 weeks apart. However, I think human nature would be, I lasered it once, oh, three days later, it doesn't look so bad, let me hit it again. Oh, it's next week, it's looking pretty good, let me hit it again. And before you know it, you've exposed your skin to multiple traumas, which is a great way of removing pigment and making scars. The second thing is eye injuries. I would be very concerned with getting retinal damage and blindness. There were people on these videos lasering their face without protective eyewear. The protective eyewear is critical to maintain safety. If you should get a laser hit directly to the retina, it's going to damage the retina and probably cause blindness. Even though it's a handheld device, lasers tend to have a lot of power. We see little handheld pointers getting into the cockpits of planes 35,000 feet above you. So this laser pointed a few inches from your retina is sure to cause damage and possible blindness. I was concerned about that as well. So do I think the neat cell will remove a tattoo? I think it will remove it partially. I think that it will lighten it up, probably enough to get a cover tattoo. But what I don't like a lay public making these determinations of what energy they should use and what spot size they should use. I think if you really want your tattoo to be removed properly, you should see a professional. I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something new and have a good day.